Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, back again with another little computer project. What we're looking at here is a Dell Latitude C610 that I picked up at Goodwill last week for $10. Very good deal. Um, it's just missing the hard drive and the memory. And the reason um, I'm just now getting to getting this up and running is because I didn't have compatible memory for this computer. I it takes SD RAM, but it's it's strictly PC 133 only, and I didn't have any PC 133 sticks, surprisingly. So I had to order one off eBay for a few dollars and wait for that to come in, which it came in today. So we can go ahead and start getting this computer up and running. Um, I've had a C610 before in the past, um, and it's been on this channel before, but I sold it years ago. I also had a C600, which was a little bit of a better, more appropriate machine for me, but as you may recall, last year I gave it to my um, cousin as a birthday present, which he still enjoys having. And, um, I, and as of right now, I don't have any Windows 98 era laptops, surprisingly. Um, and I was kind of needing one, and I came across this at Goodwill, and there you go. Um, and it's in pretty good, okay shape. Um, just some dings and scratches on the top there. Open it up. Looks uh, pretty good. Little uh, mouse point thing right there is a little nasty, but no big deal. Specs of this, well, I'm not entirely sure since I haven't been able to turn it on yet. It has, um, I know it has a Pentium 3, I had to guess probably um, somewhere between 1 gigahertz and 1.2 gigahertz, uh, kind of a high-end Pentium 3, um, if I recall from my last C610. Um, and that's probably about it, um, since it doesn't have a hard drive or a memory or memory in it right now. So, in this video, we're going to attempt to um, get this up and running. I don't know if this works. Um, I know um, it does at least give me... Um, an error code via the caps lock key when I turn it on. It blinks about nine or ten times indicating a RAM error, which is because there's no RAM in here. So hopefully this computer will come to life or else we really won't have much of a video now, shall we? <laughs> so first thing I want to do is pop the bottom off here. And it has a Windows XP COA on there, which is pretty odd. But these did make good XP laptops back in the day. Although, when I use Pentium 3s these days, there's really no point in having XP on here. Because XP just runs a lot better on a Pentium 4 or a Core 2 Duo these days, especially a Core 2 Duo. I save Pentium 3s for um, 98 and 2000, and sometimes ME if I'm feeling kind of frisky. Okay, we'll take this uh, stick of memory out that I um, tried using in it, but again, um, would not post with it because it's not 133. And we'll go ahead and pop this 133 in. This is a um, this is 256 megs, which is plenty enough. And also, this laptop has built-in Wi-Fi, which is um, very very um, fancy for this era of computer. And um, being a little bit full of myself by putting this <laughs> back on already without testing it. So, uh, there's the other screw here. Now let's get the uh, power cord going and see if we can uh, get somewhere. Okay, just in case it turns on when I plug it in. I'll go ahead and do it on camera. Okay, got a charge LED, which I was getting before, so let's see if we can continue with this video or not. Yes, we can! I know it's probably going to need a new battery and a new CMOS battery. See if I can stretch it out a little bit. There we go. Looks better. Okay, screen looks good. I was worried that the screen might not work. Okay, we got some more specs here. 
We got a 1 gigahertz Pentium 3, so I was um, just about right on my estimate. Um, 512K of level 2 cache, 256 megs of RAM, which we added. ATI Mobility with 16 megs of video memory. And um, for audio, we got the Crystal 4205. Um, on the C600, you get the ESS. On here, you get Crystal. Um, it, it, this has its benefits and um, downside to it, having the Crystal on here. The uh, good news with having Crystal is that the audio quality sounds a lot better. It's a lot clearer. But the bad news is, is that it um, is not MS-DOS friendly. You cannot play any MS-DOS games on here with sound in Windows 98, which is a real bummer. But later on in this video, before you have time, I will ch show you a way to cheat yourself around that. Well, don't cheat yourself. That sounds painful, but <laughs> you get what I'm saying. And it believes what, that we're in um, 2003. So let's change that, even though it probably won't save any of these settings. What's, what time is it? It's uh, 2.48 p.m. That's military time, I see. Did I say 38 or 48? 48. Oh, and it is February the 11th of 2019. Let's see what else we got in here. Okay. Oh, and the uh, optical drive is CD-ROM only, but I will look into getting a uh, DVD-ROM for this. And the nice thing about these old Dell Latitudes, uh, the C-Series um, line of computers, is that despite their age, they are extremely easy to get new parts for, like new batteries, um, optical drives, you know, the modular bay here. Um, they, they still make new batteries for this. It's So, these really do make um, perfect portable Windows 98 computers, since you can still get batteries for them. Okay, um, battery status charging, I doubt that. <laughs> so, I guess we um, need to s install a hard drive now. So let's do that now. Okay, the hard drive we might be using today is this Western Digital 80 Gigabyte Scorpio Drive IDE. This, um, I can't guarantee is going to work or not because I originally bought this to use in my Dell Inspiron 1150 um, a few months ago, and it was having problems uh, using this hard drive in that computer so I don't know if it the computer itself just didn't like this or there's something wrong with the drive itself I guess we'll find out so first let's put this um, Dell um, hard drive connector on here they were um, kind enough to include this with this laptop I was afraid they wouldn't considering this was a parts machine Okay, there we go, and um, hopefully I have the right set of screws for this. I'm not sure if I do or not. Okay, that's not going to fit. Okay, maybe this will fit. And I dropped it on the floor. Let's try this one. Maybe I should just do this on the table. <laughs> okay. This would be a lot easier if I weren't doing it on camera, but really, but. Then you wouldn't, you guys wouldn't be able to see the magic of installing a hard drive. Okay, we got that one side in. Let me see if I can find the one I dropped. Probably not. Yeah, I'm gonna have to scrounge up another one. Be right back. Okay, I went on ahead and put the other screw in on off camera. Go ahead and slide this in like so. I'll wait and put a screw in there a little bit later. 
And let's see if something magical happens. Hopefully not black magic. I have a feeling we're, we've lost our CMOS settings again. Yep. And we're back in 2003 again, but it is seeing um, an 80 gig hard drive, but again, I don't know for sure if that's working or not. Now, um, we need to format this hard drive, and we're going to put Windows 98 Second Edition on here. I could put Windows 2000 on here as well, but let's face it, Windows 98 is just cooler. <laughs> so, let me grab my CD for that, and we will um, get to work on that. Okay, first thing we need to do is partition, and we could do that from the Windows 98 CD, but since this hard drive is 80 gigabytes, we're going to be here all day if we use um, Windows 98's format feature because you can't quick format a hard drive that's not formatted yet. So instead, we're going to boot from this Acronis OS selector CD. And this was um, originally on a floppy, but I was able to convert it to a CD. And so it says no bootable devices, strike F1. That does not bode well. We don't have a broken CD-ROM because I don't have a replacement for it. I don't like how it's winding up and then winding down. Okay, is the Windows 98 CD going to boot, I wonder? Uh, well, this may put a an end to our project. Don't go beep beep. And it went beep beep. Oh. Why is this, why is why do we have a dead CD ROM? Why why is the CD ROM non functional? Why don't I have a replacement for this? Why am I gonna to have to order one and wait about a week before we can fix this? <laughs> okay, what we can do to um, buy us some time before before the uh, new drive arrives, which I still need to order. We can take this hard drive, assuming it works of course, and connect it to this USB adapter and plug it into my uh, main system. I'm just going to get it lined up correctly. And I'll uh, plug it into the computer here. sure if that's working or not, and I don't think it is. Well, I had it on backwards, I think. There we go. Something should pop up. Okay, apparently it was already partitioned with something. But what we're going to do is we're going to open up VMware. And we're going to create a new virtual machine. I'll do custom. Zoom in there for you. And we'll and just for compatibility, we'll do Workstation 9 compatibility. Installer disk image file. Um, figure out where I got my software disk. I need to find my Windows 98 ISO. Okay, we'll just name it Dell. This is only a temporary virtual machine. Okay, all that's good. And use a physical disk. And let's see, probably physical drive 6. And let's see what we can do with this. Okay. Actually, first, since this is a physical drive, let's just boot from a, uh, a Cronus OS selector floppy, and this computer doesn't have a floppy controller. 
or the virtual machine that is, so we're going to have to add one, which we can't because the virtual machine is on. Okay. Add. Seems like every time I um, partake in a computer project, something like this always has to happen. Um, there's always some kind of a roadblock I have to deal with. And use a floppy image. Uh, uh, Cronus. Go. And powered on. Okay, next, next, yes. Run disk administrator. We go. We got an NTFS partition on here, which we don't want. Go ahead and partition this. Now I want to partition it in a way that I'll have um, two partitions: one for OS and software, and another one to store um, data like de game files and goodies like that. So, um, how much will uh, 60 gigs set us back? Let's see, 14.5 gigs le um, left. Uh, just for safety's sake, let's do 50. Go, set as active, and we'll make that FAT32 for the second partition there. Go ahead and take out the uh, Acronis floppy, and it should start to partition now. Okay, apparently it's forgetting that there's a Windows 98 CD in the drive. Okay, apparently it's not booting from the CD-ROM anymore. It's a very angry sounding um, beep, don't you think? Okay, we need to go to Escape, CD-ROM drive, boot from CD-ROM, start a computer with CD-ROM support. Okay, wait for it to do its thing. And because I don't really trust um, Acronis' way of partitioning and formatting, we're going to uh, go to the E drive where the CD is, go to the Win98 folder, and format C colon slash Q slash S, which will copy over the, uh, the uh, boot files. Now, if this drive doesn't work, I'm going to have to steal the one out of the... Uh, Inspiron 1150, which I guess is no big deal, rather not, but okay, we'll label that OS, and we'll do uh, my standard way of copying the Windows setup files to the drive, MD Windows, MD Windows slash options, MD Windows slash options slash cabs, CD Windows, slash options cabs copy e win 98 and there we go basically it's just seeing the hard drive um, that I have plugged in through the USB as a um, as the hard drive that's connected to this virtual machine I know that made no sense but it works <laughs> and we can go ahead and uh, close out of that and we can take our drive back to the laptop and see if we can boot from it. Okay, let's see if it boots. Um, that was a unexpected detour, but these things happen. Again, we're going to lose our CMOS settings. Strike F1. There we go. And I also copied over the uh, USB flash driver for Windows 98 since 
that installs from a floppy and this computer doesn't have a floppy drive. So let's continue on business as usual. This, um, at least we were able to get to this point. Setup slash IS so we can skip scan disk calls. I don't feel like waiting for that. Okay, click continue. And um, presumably this is going to be the um, same old Windows 98 setup that we all know and love. I know this thing like the back of my hand. Apparently I don't. I have a cut on the back of my hand that I didn't know about. <laughs> and this part always um, locks up for a little bit because Windows 95, 98, and ME um, expect to see a floppy drive here, whether it, even though there isn't, and so it gets a little bit confused. But don't worry, in about a minute or so, it'll get its head together and we can continue. So, um, what's on my shopping list for this laptop? Well, definitely a new optical drive, preferably a, one with DVD support. Um, maybe a new battery. I have a, because I have a battery um, from my old C600 lying around that might still work for this. And uh, maybe a floppy drive to go with this computer as well. And maybe a new CMOS battery, but if we get a new um, regular battery, that's usually not necessary. We'll get there someday. Again, if you have a laptop like this um, from back in the day and it freezes right here, don't freak out. It'll get there <laughs> eventually. Okay, I told you we'd get there. We don't want to install into Windows.000. You do that and uh, the Queen of England will cry. I don't know why, but she just will. Do custom all the accessories, no communications, all the desktop themes, all the multimedia, no online services, no Outlook Express, all the system tools except for the um, FAT32 converter because this is already FAT32. And we'll name this uh, Dell C610 on the network. And it's going to get hung up here as well because it was wanting to make a startup disk. So again, give this a minute to get its head together. Okay, remove the disk or lack thereof. And we're going to start copying the files over. And of course, I'll pause here and we'll resume on the other side. And I just remembered i got to go download some drivers for this. So I will take care of that while it's doing this. Now that went a lot quicker than I thought it would, but... We're already time to restart. Getting ready to run Windows for the first time. That sounded like a combination of Duke Nukem and Bob Dylan. Huh. Okay, it will probably be wanting user information, and it does. As you can see right here, the keyboard works. So does the mouse. And we get the product key. Alright, got all the information punched in. And um, sometimes it takes a little while, sometimes it doesn't. But considering how quick it was to copy those files, um, we might not be here too long. But I will probably um, pause at certain points. And it picks up PCMCIA. And I think I'll pause right here. Okay, adjust our date here. Um, we're back in 2003 again. Date up to 19. And it's uh, 3.30 p.m. now. 3.31, I mean. And we're in the Eastern Time Zone. I'm just going to 
So control panel, do the start menu shortcuts. And we should get the cute little drum in a minute. Uh, I bet it's trying to seek the floppy drive right now that doesn't exist, so it's probably going to have to sit here another minute. Okay, it's going to update the system settings now, which is going to take a few minutes. Um, while it's doing that, we can partake in the um, long-time tradition of doing that. <laughs> Alright, we'll restart now and we should get to our desktop at this point. Oh. I'm surprised this hard drive works, to be honest with you. <laughs> One thing I want to do once we get into Windows is um, test this CD drive again. Maybe it was just having trouble booting and maybe it can still read something. He's picking up that monitor. This is a 1024 by 768 screen, by the way. Right, go ahead, come on, come on, we don't have all day. You're lucky I don't have to pee. And we don't have any sound drivers installed, or video drivers, or anything installed, really. <laughs> what I would not recommend using Windows in this state. <laughs> well, yeah. This screen would be a lot more entertaining if we had sound. Yeah, battery's still at 0%. Okay, let's take this Windows 98 CD that we were trying to use earlier and see if it um, will do anything with this or not. Probably not, but it's worth a try. And I did look on eBay and um, the cheapest DVD-ROM drive I can find for this is $50. But I did find a CDRW drive for like 15 which is a lot more reasonable. And it should have picked it up by now. Yeah, this drive is toast. See, I'm definitely going to have to shell out a few bucks for a new drive. But we can go ahead and install our USB driver. And we'll restart. Okay, we're rebooted. Let's plug in our flash drive. Hopefully the USB port works. Don't know why it wouldn't. Well, where is it? There we go. That's a good sign. This USB storage device driver for um, Windows 98 is one of the greatest things ever made. There's even one for um, Windows 95, which I did a video about a couple of years ago, thanks to Toasty Tech. So check that out if you haven't already. Right, Dell Latitude C610. And just for a little bit of extra assurance, let's just go ahead and copy this over to the desktop. And we're dealing with USB 1.1 speed, so this may take a minute. Okay, got it copied over. And um, I always like to start off with the chipset. Since that's pretty much what powers everything. Go. Ahead and... Go. and we'll go ahead and install our audio. Again, it's a shame it doesn't support DOS, but I do have a way to cheat, which I will show a little bit later. Oof. Yeah, this is a 
This can be a problem sometimes installing sound drivers on Windows 98. It'll um, for some reason freak out and think that the uh, the uh, C drive has been removed from the computer. We may have to do a restart. Oh yeah, when it when you get the color bars up here, that pretty much means Windows is dead. <laughs> so we're gonna have to do this. And since we're rebooting, it's going to set up every single little component for the chipset that you can imagine. <laughs> Because that's just how Windows 98 rolls. It's kind of entertaining in a way. I don't know why, but yeah, this may take a minute. Okay, chipset is set up. Let's try um, installing the audio again. Hopefully we'll have better luck this time. Now I've gotten similar issues installing the sound drivers on Windows 9X virtual machines before. I don't know what, exactly why it does it, but it just... One of the many, many um, problems you can run into with vintage computers. And yet, I still love them. Okay, it's a WDM driver. Okay, we'll restart later. Back to our driver folder here and install Access Direct, which will um, allow us to use this little button right here. And all it is is just a button you can set to be a shortcut to your favorite software. And yeah, we already got sound. <laughs> Dell Dock Quick Install. I don't have a dock for this, but we'll go ahead and install this. It's going to reboot despite what I told it, didn't I? <laughs> okay, we're, or maybe not. Okay, let's install our Ethernet driver. Hopefully, this is the right one. So, 3Com. Until speed step. Down clocks the CPU when you're on battery to save on battery. And there are a couple of different modem drivers that we can try out. I don't know if that was the one or not. <laughs> not like I use the modem on here, but I don't like having a um, bunch of uh, devices and device manager um, being unknown. And it looks like that was the right one. Well, now it's picking up the Ethernet. And I'm curious to see how this, how the Wi-Fi on this works. Again, I don't know if I got the right driver or not. But first, we'll install our touchpad driver. It's just standard Synaptics. Okay, now let's see if we can get Wi-Fi going or not. Oh, it wants us to do it manually. Okay. If you want it that way, we can do that. <laughs> Okay, I think it's this one, 46011. Windows was unable to locate a driver for this device because you suck. Uh, <sighs> well, guess we won't be using Wi Fi yet. So we'll go ahead and install the ones we missed out on here. 
Softex Bay Manager. This will um, fix our floppy drive um, problem. And Dell OS updates. And we'll go ahead and restart. Oh, ooh, ooh, wait! I just I just remembered something. I didn't download a video driver. Yeah, that may be a problem. One moment. Okay, got the video driver um, copied over. Shouldn't be much to this. Again, this is um, ATI Mobility Radeon. DirectX is not installed. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. If you let me continue anyway, go ahead. <laughs> right, let's restart again. And um, off camera, I might try and solve this uh, Wi-Fi card problem. Um, it they might not even have a driver for Windows 98. Would not surprise me at all. Okay, we got full colors now. And it found some more hardware. Okay, it's wanted to reinstall the monitor driver. Windows 98 sure loves its monitor drivers. So we can go to Device Manager and see if everything is accounted for. I know the Wi-Fi won't. Yeah, I'm going to have to find the driver for that if it even exists. see where that bay manager um, disables the floppy drive controller when there's no floppy drive installed which is really nice but other than Wi-Fi everything else is installed so I think off camera I'll install all my favorite software and we will conclude the video um, after I do that real quick I um, did some quick research on this wireless card. This looks like it was added um, quite a few years after this computer was built. This was this card is dated um, August 13th, 2006 and I searched online for drivers for Windows 98 and nothing exists. Um, oldest you can get for this is Windows XP so I just took it out. I'm not even going to bother with this. I don't even need Wi-Fi in that laptop anyway. But, oh well, I, it would have been neat to have Wi-Fi, uh, internal Wi-Fi on Windows 98, but I guess we're not going to make that happen with this card. Okay, so I've got everything installed on here that I was able to without a CD, which, by the way, I did order the CD-RW drive off of eBay. That should get here um, eventually. <laughs> and once I get that, I'll be able to install everything else, but stuff that I was able to copy from CDs from other computers work just fine but again like stuff that needs to be on a CD I'll have to wait for that now I was gonna show you guys how to um, play DOS games on a computer like this that's running Windows 98 but the sound card doesn't have any DOS support well a little program um, we're all familiar with is needed for this task DOSBox. <laughs> That's right, folks. DOSBox runs on Windows 98, and this is the latest version, by the way. So, um, we can load up a game just to test it out with. And we'll do Jill of the Jungle. Go. Seems pretty seamless, a little slow right there, but... I need to adjust some settings to make it run a little bit more efficiently. But it has sound, and everything's working. And it feels just like the real thing. And I do admit, though, um, it is sad that Windows 98, a DOS-based operating system, <laughs> can't play DOS games with sound. But that's just the way the sound card is designed on this computer. It's a little too modern to handle um, anything DOS-based. 
but with DOS box, you can cheat and make it feel like the real thing. So I'll just uh, breeze through this level and not do that. <laughs> So yeah, that, I believe, gets the point across. And we'll just type exit, and we can uh, go back into Windows 98. So yeah, this computer is so far working just fine, other than that optical drive. In fact, um, I was able to source another battery for this. I mentioned earlier that I thought I still had a battery for my old Latitude D, um, C600. Well, I did, and it still works. And um, it's still charging, though. But we're at 79%. I'll let it charge overnight. And um, this way I can keep my CMOS settings, and I can more easily play games in bed. And again, I wasn't able to use that, that Wi-Fi card, but who really cares? <laughs> it's not like I was ever going to use it on here anyway. But, um, I guess it'll about do it for this video. I'll do a video um, later on where I um, show this computer doing a little bit more than what it is now once I get this, the new optical drive. So, for now, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.